Hello everyone, welcome to MR Learning Circle. I hope you all are doing good. So from today, we are resuming your GATE lecture series and we are starting from section 8 that is Microbial Disease and Host Pathogen Interaction. So the first subtopic of this section is Normal Microbiota. Just grab your notebook and note down the important points. So what do you understand by the term Normal Microbiota? So normal microbiota denotes the population of microorganisms that inhabit the skin and the mucous membrane of healthy normal person. Clear? So these microorganisms that live inside and on human are estimated to outnumber your human somatic and germ cells by the factor of 10. Okay, the, that means these normal microbiota are a group of more microorganisms that live on your skin and mucous membrane like a normal residence. Now, these outnumber by the factor of 10. Let, for example, your somatic and germ cells are 100 in number. And by the factor of 10, that means 100 into 10 that means 1000 they are if your cells are 100 in number your microorganisms are 1000 in so what do you understand by the somatic cells somatic cells are the cells other than your sperm cells and your ovum and germ cells are the your reproductive cells that are the sperm and the ovum now coming to the microbiome so microbiome means the genome of microbial symbionts Microbial symbionts here are your normal microbiota and genomes means the genetic information of your microbial symbionts. And symbionts means the coexistence of two microorganisms means how they are living together. Their relationship is known as symbionts. Now coming towards the normal microbiota, a normal microbial flora differentiation. So the normal microbial flora are more or less constant for each species and are broadly divided into the residents and your transient microbiota. Clear? That means your normal microbial flora is of two types. One is resident and the other is transient. Now coming towards the resident microbiota. Resident microbiota are the fixed types of microorganisms. Here. And they are regularly found in a given area in a particular given time. Let's for example, this is your skin. And microorganisms present here are A, B and C. And the age is 5 to 10 years. Now, from 10 to 12 years, these microbial flora will change to B, C, A or any other. Means they are fixed. Means they will only remain here for a particular, they will only, they will only be present on your particular organ. That means for, we are taking your skin. So this ABC will be present from 5 to 10 years. And after that, uh, CDE or EFG, any of the microorganisms or a group of microorganisms could be found on your skin and mucous membrane. They are the fixed membranes, fixed microorganisms. Now coming towards the transient microbiome. So transient microbiota are the non-pathogenic or potentially pathogenic microorganisms. Means they have the potential to be pathogenic. Pathogens means pathogens are those microorganisms that have the ability to cause disease. Clear? Now these transient microorganisms are derived from the environment. And they do not produce disease. And they do not establish permanently on any surface clear now coming to a phenomena which is known as bacterial interference <clears throat> so bacterial interference is where the resident microbiota may prevent colonization by pathogens and possible disease here it is a phenomena where the resident microbiota resident microbiota it prevents the colonization by pathogens. Means it does not allow the pathogen to enter your body and form its colony and establish itself on that particular surface. That is your. Now the definition is that 
how does it prevents it may interfere in the binding site means it will have a competition with your pathogen who will have your normal microbiota will have a competition with the pathogen for the receptor or binding sites on the host cells and the other competition would be of the nutrients okay they will fight for the nutrient your pathogen will not get the nutrient and another is mutual inhibition by metabolic or toxic products these pathogens would be inhibited by the metabolic and the toxic products which are produced by your normal microbiota clear now this can be important for your examination this bacterial interference who interferes the normal microbiota interferes the colonization of your pathogen clear this is as simple as that now coming to another point that is when the microorganisms that are present constantly on your body ah uh, these microorganisms they are known as commensals what the commensals is in this one organism would be benefited whereas the other would not be affected that means it will have it will not have any effect either a positive or a negative one now coming to your gut gut means your intestine the relationship that is found is mutual relationships that means both the organisms are benefited clear where your micro uh, gut is also benefited and the microorganisms living in your gut is benefited so this happens only in the gut whereas in other body parts commensalism is present so this point is to be noted and it is very important now dental plague so dental plague is the most prevalent and densest of the human biofilm so the early colonizers are the streptococcus sanguis streptoco clear the early colonizer you have to remember the name of streptococcus sanguis now the others are streptococcus mutans streptococcus mites streptococcus salivarius streptococcus oralis streptococcus jordani lactobacilli and actinomycetes actinomyces so which species of microorganism is present on in your dental plate it is streptococcus and who initiates this it is streptococcus sanguis remember it it but it could be asked in your exam here just take a screenshot of this so that you can have something to study or while revising okay now coming to the late colonizers so late colonizers are usually the gram negative anaerobes there are they are porphyromonas prevotola fusa bacterium vinella species okay and they even include the anaerobic spirochetes that is treponema sorry treponema denticola now coming towards the caries what do you mean by caries so caries is the disintegration of <coughs> it is the disintegration of the teeth beginning at the surface and progressing inwards and the microorganism that is responsible or that is dominant in the initiation of caries is your streptococcus mutans just remember the name of the microorganism that is present in caries or that is dominant now coming towards the normal microbiota of skin it is the strep staphylococcus epidermidis staphylococcus aureus micrococcus species alpha hemolytic and non hemolytic streptococci now just for your revision alpha hemolytic streptococci are the streptococci which form a green sheen or green discoloration around the colony in the blood agar whereas non hemolytic strain does not form any kind of discoloration or transparent cabbaging of your media now another species that is present is corny bacterium another is propionio bacterium pepto streptococcus actinobacter and small numbers of other organisms like candida species and pseudomonas aerogenes now the normal microbiota of nasopharynx it is diphtheroids non pathogenic nizeria species alpha hemolytic streptococci streptococcus epidermidis non hemolytic streptococci 
and a robes lesser amounts of which are accompanied by now they are found in huge amounts or in plenty of amounts and which is found in less and lesser amount are yeast hemophilus species pneumococci streptococcus aureus gram negative rods like miseria meningitis clear yeah, take a screenshot now coming towards the gastrointestinal tract and the rectum so the microorganism that is present here are various antibacteriaceae except salmonella shigella yersinia vibrio and campylobacter species they are not present okay this salmonella shigella yersinia vibrio and campylobacter are not present remember that other enterobacteriaceae would be present but they will not be present <clears throat> Now the other that is present is glucose non-fermenting gram negative rods, enterococci, alpha hemolytic and non-hemolytic streptococci, diphtheroids, staphylococcus in small number, yeast in small number and anaerobes in large number. Clear? Take a screenshot. Now in the gut of the newborn in the intensive care nurseries. Or you can say in the bowels of the newborns in the intensive care nurseries tend to be colonized by Klebsiella, Citrobacter and Enterobacter. Now you can get a question which um, normal microbiota is present in newborns in intensive care nursery. So your options would be this given. Now you have to choose. Just remember it. Take a screenshot. Now in this, um, in your, it is related to your gut microbes only. This is technique is known as fecal microbiota transplantation (FMT). So what is this fecal microbiota transplantation? It is also known as stool transplant. And in this process, the transplantation of fecal bacteria from a healthy individual. Okay, from who? healthy individual into the recipient means your fecal microbes from a healthy individual is transplanted to your patient or the recipient who is who requires it and it has been successfully used as a treatment for patients suffering from clostridium difficile infection so you can get a question that fmt is used for the treatment of one, two, three, four. Four options would be given, and one of one of the options would be Clostridium difficile infection. So you have to mark this. This is very important question for your exam. Now coming to the normal microbiota of your genitalia, they are corn bacterium species, Lactobacillus species, alpha hemolytic and non hemolytic streptococci, and non pathogenic Neisseria species. Here. Pathogenic uh, Neisseria species would be present then. Which disease will it cause? It will cause the pathogenic species is Neisseria gonorrhoeae and the disease which it will cause is gonorrhea. Clear? Now, the following when mixed and are predominant Enterococci, Enterobacteriaceae and other gram negative rods like Streptococcus, Epidermidis, Candida albicans and yeast. Clear anaerobes are dominant in number and they are pivotola, clostridium, and streptococcus. So there are only few species you would have noted that which are actually present in everywhere. Yeah. So they could be you have to just just sort it out. Now coming towards the role of your normal microbial flora. So they are the first line of defense here. Yeah. They aid in digestion and they play a role in toxin degradation and they contribute to the maturation of immune system. And this is all about your role and complete information about your normal microbial flora. Yeah, that was all for today. Thank you for watching and share this video with your friends. Like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. Take care.